Oh, dear. Ah, much better. Stitch has taken over. So strap yourselves in for Disney's most <coughs> experience. Check out Stitch's Great Escape, new at the Magic Kingdom. My goodness, that's not yours, is it? Some people love it, and some people hate it. But because of all the comments we've been getting about Stitch's Great Escape, we thought we would make a video about it, letting people know our thoughts about this ride, and why we think it really is a Disney disaster. Welcome to Hollywood! Stitch's Great Escape opened on November 16, 2004, at Magic Kingdom in Disney World. This ride is a kind of prequel of the film, where we find ourselves in the Galactic Federation Prisoner Teleport Center, where we've been recruited by the Galactic Councilwoman to be guards for the Galactic Federation. While we're being taught the basic procedures of guard duty, Captain Gantu gives an alert of a level 3 prisoner being beamed to the center, so we're then taken to the teleportation chamber to receive him. Stitch escapes into the audience, where he spits on us, burps chili dogs in our faces, and bounces on our shoulders. All of this before escaping to Cinderella's castle and being kicked out by her, as soon as she realizes he is not her prince. If you want to know more about the history of this attraction, check out Yesterworld Entertainment's video. This attraction became one of the most hated Disney attractions ever, and some might even argue that it is definitely Disney's worst attraction ever. But why all the hate? After all, Stitch is one of the most loved Disney characters. Well, here are the five main reasons. It replaced an amazing ride. Before it was replaced by Stitch's Great Escape, this circular theater housed extraterrestrial alien encounter. This attraction opened on June 20th, 1995, and was one of the few horror attractions in the park. At first, it was supposed to be an attraction based on Ridley Scott's movie Alien. But after George Lucas told Imagineers that the Xenomorph ride would be a bit too intense for Disney, Michael Eisner decided the ride would no longer be based on the movie, but told Imagineers that he was confident they would come up with something less frightening to be the basis for their alien encounter. They came up with Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter, the edgiest, most scary Disney attraction ever made. It started with a pretty dark pre-show, where we're supposed to get a simple teleporting technology demonstration. A fuzzy alien creature named Skippy was going to be teleported from one side of the room to another, but this goes horribly wrong, leaving the little guy burnt to a crisp, wailing and in pain. This chilling pre-show was kind of a warning for people who didn't believe how terrifying the attraction could be. After this, guests enter the main demonstration chamber, where they were locked in with shoulder restraints while looking at a massive glass tube fed by wires and pipes overhead. The show begins with the commander of XS Tech, an alien corporation offering to beam himself to the theater, but something goes wrong. The teleportation ray is intercepted by a bloodthirsty insectoid creature that gets beamed in instead. It's tall with spider-like legs and a long body, something like a praying mantis. It has gnashing fangs and glowing red eyes, plus transparent wings like a dragonfly. The creature shrieks horrifically and begins to bang its head and spindly legs against the glass tube. It succeeds in breaking the glass and flies into the audience where it growled in guests' ears, rolled down their necks, splattered them with blood from an unlucky convention center worker overhead, and more. And even though the ride terrified most of the guests, it was a fan favorite. And those types of rides are so hard to let go of. So when it was announced that it would close down, people were not happy. But whenever Disney announces that a ride will be replaced, we can't help but feel hopeful that at least a new ride will be awesome too. Which brings us to our second reason. It badly replaced an amazing ride. A lot of people hate that Maelstrom was replaced with Frozen Ever After, or that Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout replaced the Tower of Terror, but you can't argue that those rides are pretty cool attractions. They're well thought of and well done, but that was not the case with Stitch's Great Escape. Sure, the Stitch audio animatronic is amazing, but that's it. The jokes are not funny, the story doesn't even make a lot of sense. There are many inconsistencies with the original story, like Stitch calling himself by the name Lilo gave him, even before meeting her. You'll have to think of a name for him. His name is Stitch. And it seems like Disney forgot that the reason we all love Stitch is because of how he learned to change through the movie. He is wild, playful, maybe even antisocial, but in the end, likable. This characteristic is completely missing from Stitch in this ride. Hello, Cinderella, your prince is here. <gasps> You're not my prince. Bye. <laughs> this attraction was for no one. 
One of the main reasons why Alien Encounter was closed was because the attraction was too scary and people didn't seem to pay attention to the warnings before entering. So, Disney had a lot of complaints from these guests. So, they decided to quickly and cheaply replace the attraction with a more kid-friendly one. The problem was that Stitch's Great Escape was also terrifying for kids because, even though Stitch was not as scary as the alien from Alien Encounter, the darkness and craziness that happened during it was still pretty scary for them. Meanwhile, older guests thought the ride was too annoying and juvenile for them, so they found it boring and underwhelming. It destroyed the Tomorrowland concept. When Tomorrowland started to become outdated, Imagineers had a problem. They had to come up with a new concept for the land that would not become outdated as time passed. And to solve this problem, Tony Baxter came in. He was already designing a kind of Tomorrowland for Euro Disney that could never become outdated because it was not based on accurately predicting the future. Instead, this land was a vision of what the future looked like in the past. This worked because it could never come true. And that was exactly what Tomorrowland needed. So the reimagining of Tomorrowland began and they came up with Tomorrowland 2055. The concept was pretty simple. It would be set on Disneyland's 100th birthday, and this land was a conceptual place. It would become an intergalactic alien spaceport, a stop for any extraterrestrial visitors that came to Earth and any human that wanted to visit space. Here, people and aliens live and work in harmony. If you want to know more, check out our Tomorrowland 2055 video. Sadly, this concept was canceled for Disneyland, but Walt Disney World got its own version. Magic Kingdom's new Tomorrowland was great, it took guests to a 20th century pop serial comic sci-fi city, where aliens, humans, and robots would actually live, work, play, and eat. And each ride would be part of the city, having its own part of the story. Alien Encounter was the city's convention center, the People Mover, its public transportation, the Timekeeper, its science center, Space Mountain, its transportation hub, Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe, its local watering hole, even the arcade was themed as the city's power plant. It all fit together perfectly, but with Alien Encounter closing and changing to Stitch's Great Escape, the Timekeeper becoming Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor, and the opening of Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin, what was once a thoughtful, detailed, and well-made land slowly became a cartoony mess. And last but not least, the way it opened. On November 16, 2004, guests that visited the Magic Kingdom saw a huge blow-up Stitch sitting outside the train station. They saw the park covered with Stitch wanted posters. He even stole a Magic Kingdom van and crashed it into a tree at downtown Disney's marketplace. But this was definitely not the worst part. As guests approached the castle, they saw this. That's right, Cinderella Castle all covered in toilet paper with a huge wanted poster that had Stitch's King spray painted all over it. Thankfully, this overlay only lasted for a day. The problem with all of this again comes back to the likability of the character. The Stitch that was being represented wasn't even the character that audiences had fallen in love with, but the Stitch that would spit, drool, and burp on guests' faces. Of course, everybody is entitled to their own opinion, and some people really love this attraction. But the fact is that the attraction was not being visited by many guests, and so in 2016, Disney decided that Stitch's Great Escape would switch to seasonal operation opening only when the crowd levels at Magic Kingdom peaks, around holidays and during the attraction's year of seasonal status. The first pre-show room was briefly converted to Stitch's Alien Encounter meet and greet where guests could meet Stitch. And then, when the 2017 holiday celebrations ended, Stitch's Great Escape did too, and the attraction was quietly and permanently closed on January 6, 2018. While no official announcement was made, a user leaked some pictures of the attraction being dismantled already. So tell us, what do you think about this attraction? Let us know in the comments so you can be featured in our next video. If you like the channel, check out our online store where we have lots of products with cool designs like these. Follow the link in the description and also be sure to check out our Instagram page for a behind the scenes look on Fast Pass Facts. See you next time.